Six minutes to the top of the hour. Welcome back to Sunday Live here at Citizen Television. We were talking earlier on with Archbishop Anthony Moheria of the Nyeri Archdiocese. He joins us again to talk about the state of the nation. Archbishop, thanks so much again for your time. I guess we better take it from the back of that package by Victoria about Pope Francis being in South Sudan. And before that, he was in DRC, as you well know. You were supposed to be in Juba and you, uh, you couldn't make it. But the message here, he's talking about blind fury of violence. Yes, indeed. And he's not just referring to South Sudan or Congo, is he? No. In fact, uh, it's, it's something that we all must listen with a very open mind about what Pope Francis' message was. He says he comes as a program of peace and at the same time an apostle of hope. So Africa needs a very strong message to be awakened with a very strong message of peace precisely because we have a fuse there. Uh, this fury of violence is very easy to diffuse, is very easy to explode. Uh, and this where we refuse to speak, we refuse to have dialogue, and we start throwing uh, and trading insults and threats and putting ourselves at a distance and refusing to dialogue. So this was a very, very strong message from uh, Pope Francis, and it's for all of us. And I would say for Kenya and for other African countries, now we have our leaders in Bujumbura, and I would wish that they, uh, they would have a moment to just reflect in order to tell all Africa that there is something we must change in our script. So what the Pope refers to is a leadership gap or a deficiency that has come to us in Africa. And it's not only those who are in power, but even those who are in positions of leadership that very often uh, seem to speak like lords mm -hmm. and not as servants. And they speak with threats and not in dialogue uh, form of let's sit, let's hear. Uh, and, and there are things that both opposition and government should unite to do. And I think that is where we should be speaking at this moment. What are the needs of our country now? And where should we, how do we address those needs? And uh, not rhetoric, which is so easy to give uh, and so easy to speak, but rather what is the constructive things that we must engage in? And what are the pitfalls that we've seen in DRC, that we've seen in South Sudan, that we've seen in other countries in Africa, that we must absolutely avoid? What kind of rhetoric will give us uh, that kind of out, uh, outcome, which is hatred, which is a return to tribalism, which is a return to absolute intolerance? Well, we should be uniting a Kenya, uniting East Africa, uniting Africa. Yeah. Archbishop, let's distill that message of peace from Africa, the region, to Kenya. Yes. And, and just looking at the post-election bad blood that has extended six months after the general election, what message do you give to the political class at a time like this? We, and I would uh, even say as leaders of the church, uh, have always wanted to put across a message of tolerance. And that the fact that you've won and you in government and the other part is in opposition does not mean you can't work towards a common good. The common good will be yours is to check, counter check the government if you're in opposition and yours as government is to respect the other part, the other party and carry out your work of government. So the first is that human dignity of each leader, of each Kenyan must be respected come at all times. And that means uh, there must be respect in the tone of our discussions. Uh, I may not agree with what you say, but I should talk to you as a human being with respect. And I should give even your point of view reasonable credibility or reasonable space. This is the right politic that we must. So we are saying, let's get back to respect. We call at one stage before the election campaign, we call it political hygiene. But it's, it's, it's more than political hygiene. It's actually, the Pope says, it's not just because we must keep peace for peace sake. It is something deeper, is that we must accept one another as brothers and sisters to build a fraternity of humanity where I accept you even though you don't think like I think, even though you have different views. So our, our first message to them is we must tolerate one another. Second, we 
also must follow the rule of law and especially the constitution. That all the disgruntments and all the things uh, that must be addressed either by government or by opposition must follow the right channels. And we don't have to be, uh, we don't have to see it played out in the public arena. A lot of these things should go to parliament. That's why they, we elected parliamentarians. A lot of these things should go into the county governance. And, and some of these things should be addressed in committees uh, which, which try to look for what's, what's wrong uh, and avoid this spontaneous, uh, you may call sidewalk or uh, the highway declarations of non-informed leaders and that also breeds a lot of misunderstanding so let's let's go back to maturity of seeking information before speaking let's go to the maturity of respect and tolerance let's dialogue let's sit down and talk what the problems are that is a way of governance and that means the time for electioneering politics is over we must go ahead in other ways. And if there are things which refer to the election, then follow through the channels that the whole system provides. And when it comes to the situation of discussions of the f going forward in terms of the politics of this country, let us follow the, those channels that are meant to feed to this. And if we go that way, we will become a mature uh, nation that already we're enjoying uh, in the worldwide uh, reputation. I would say that's my and our message as religious leaders especially. Sure. Archbishop, what, uh, speaking of tolerance, and you spoke about tolerance a moment ago, when you see a former first lady, yes, when you see the mother of the former president, herself, you know, a woman of, of, of stature in this society, having to respond to all the vitriol out there. When you see if it comes to that, what does that say about us? I use another, you've just used it in your newscast, venom of hatred uh, that we also have to avoid, a vindictive. Uh, but I wouldn't want to tread into whether or not we should have let uh, this greatly respected lady actually uh, come out to speak about in her defense. I don't think, I don't want to enter there. I think we have uh, certain respect, not only for her stature, but uh, for her age. There are people who we don't want uh, put in the public arena. And let's, uh, let's agree, let's respect our elders. And, and that's it, uh, irrespective of what's happening, let's just give them respect. That's African and that's Christian. Second is to say, well, uh, let's avoid provocation. And, and this I say also in terms of the, of, uh, the leaders who are in the current uh, leadership that are driving steel with the rear view mirror. Uh, they, they're looking into the past, they're looking into past ills. Uh, we've been told let's, let's learn to grow out of it by forgiving, by reconciliation. We, we must find deep in ourselves the fact that I have suffered injustice, the fact that I may have even gone through tough moments should not give me reason why I should come out constantly referring to the injustices because what creates in the whole nation is a feeling of uh, a kind of bitterness. And that bitterness can uh, easily go down the path of what the Pope refers to as venom, which means it creates an interior desire to heart. Venom hearts. It's poison that hearts. It's, uh, so that venom of hatred that is vindictive. Uh, uh, it's true bitterness of itself hurts the person first, the one who is suffering the bitterness, but it is less aggressive, mm. offensive. But venom is, and this is what we are starting to see, biting, spitting, snapping, and, and that cannot be for any leader. You just imagine this is something they wouldn't expect a religious leader to be doing. Mm. There's no difference between a religious leader and a political leader. All leaders must show a certain icon of leadership, and that leadership is an icon of governance, but is also an icon of God. That's why you've been placed there, to be a steward of people. And so 
what you do, you are somehow a mirror and an icon of godliness. So it doesn't matter what kind of leadership you are, you're supposed to hold those people dear and care for them and nurture them and protect them. That's leadership. The moment you prey on them, when you harass them, that is no longer leadership. That's now exploitation. And I hope that countries don't go the path of exploitation, which is what we see in those communities that are certainly now bleeding so badly in Congo or in South Sudan. And we pray God that that will change. Mm. Uh, let me ask uh, just on that point of being stewards of the people and their needs. Oftentimes in the political arena, you see servant leadership missing. And Kenyans oftentimes uh, get the raw deal when it comes to the exchanges that we see playing out on Indeed. the campaign trail. And, and right now, if it's in a church service or the public rally, their needs are not being met. And, and by that, I mean cost of living is still quite high. We're seeing electricity going up, water going up, cooking gas prices are going to go up. You know, what does this mean in terms of, and the government of the day, turning attention to attack and respond to opposition? and leaving the responsibilities of service delivery unmet. What does that mean for the Mwananchi? I think that's uh, what we should be asking the government first to deliver, uh, because that's, that's the rule, that's why we elected them. So let them focus on delivery and not so much on the rhetoric, that's true. But I, I think servant leadership is even more than just delivery, is, is having sensitivity of the actual needs of our people. We are in one of the worst farming periods. And surprisingly, even in today's uh, news uh, cast, you saw the, you, you spoke about the farming that has hit Isiolo and other places. This, is, this should be a central point of discussion for opposition and government. Mm. We have environment, uh, we're having some of the hottest days we've ever had in Kenya, in Nairobi. So you're right, there, there are things that we should be spending more time. We have now, you spoke about education from one, there's chaos in many issues about education decisions, perhaps not fully thought out, and we're still struggling to understand. So there is enough on the tray of delivery. There is a lot, and it is not only for government. It is enough for government, for other players, for faith-based organization, but fundamentally also for the opposition. In order to interrogate, in order to guide, in order to question, and therefore make sure there's a the right balance. So indeed, uh, stewardship is missing, but stewardship is something that I believe comes from within. And that's what's missing in a lot of world leaders. Yeah. If you don't have that spark within that cares, that looks for solidarity, that looks at the poor not as an instrument of your power, not as a means for your gains, but for his sake, for the human dignity. If we can, as leaders, start focusing in that, I think that's what we have to ask our, our leaders, uh, that instead of going out there and doing and speaking and rhetoric, let's get the problems of our countries addressed properly. That's maybe a long-term goal for stewardship and governance. Uh, of course, there are other issues which we cannot go into. Yeah. Corruption, which is always the elephant in the room, and uh, nepotism, which is also the elephant in the room. Uh, those who come will be able to address slowly if there is a will and a heart to care and to embrace. Archbishop, real quick, um, you heard uh, one of the clips today, uh, Deputy President Rigati Gashagwa saying they plan to attend church services every Sunday for the next five years. Is that prayers or is that politicking? I, I, I wouldn't want to judge him. I wouldn't want to judge that statement, but I think it's very good that they attend church <laughs> every Sunday uh, for the next part of their life everybody of us, let's, let's attend, let's go to church, let's encounter God, but genuinely and honestly, and not use that platform for politics. I think we must continually say this and call it out to our religious leaders and to our politics, politicians of whatever uh, political divide there, that 
the encounter with God and places of worship must not be used as instruments or platforms for political gain or political messaging. We really must work towards that so that we go to play God as equals. And after that, you can speak to the people wherever. And I think that is what we must encourage our leaders. Go to church, go to the mosque, go to pray, have your good time, not only on Sundays, include even other days, pray in your families, but please do not instrumentize your faith or your worship for political gain. And we as religious leaders, let's educate them, respecting them when they come to our places, recognizing them, but not allowing that the politics and the rhetoric of uh, exchanges take place in sacred ground. That we must defend and protect. Archbishop, how is that done practically? Because we've seen in the last two Sundays when they are given the podium, they can't help but politicize issues. Taxes has been the topic of the day in the last two weeks. So how do religious leaders, as you were saying, respectfully challenge that to keep it as a matter of faith and worship when they do a attend on Sunday? In the Catholic Church, we've tried as much. Mm -hmm. Maybe our success would be somewhere up there, 90 to 95 percent, uh, in which we say no addressing mm -hmm. from the podium. Uh, there may be one or two exceptions that we have made uh, in one of the occasions we have, but no politic politicians don't address. And I think that has to be the way that the, each church should make a decree and let all the, the politicians know that you will not be given a podium. That should be the way to go, that you are not given a podium. Because uh, if you're given a podium, it's shown that the politicians don't know how to control themselves. And I've said it uh, in the Interfaith Council, our brother Muslims uh, actually don't have that problem at all because there is no space for political uh, addresses at all. And I think that's where we should go. If they want to address, let's agree that we'll give you space outside the church. Of course, there are exceptions that we have made, one or two. For example, if the president were there, would give, but again, with very clear understanding. And in most cases, they have been fairly respective. Mm -hmm. But that's a battle. And uh, the other battle is for us, religious, because sometimes we seek gains. And uh, it's a give and take. So in order to get certain gains and help and financial, I will allow so that I'm a friend. So there is a problem of protecting that friendship. I think we have to be bold and courageous enough to say, indeed, if that is what it will cost, to somehow betray this space or to sell this space for good or for benefit, which really would be simony, then I would rather not have your help. We will continue as Christians to build our church. And I think that's a bold move, which we already made and announced as Catholic Church in Subuki, if you remember, in 2019, before the unfortunate uh, COVID uh, time pandemic hit us. But we still have to hold first because it looks like the political pressures are still coming and they, they really want to take that space. Uh, but if they are Christians, they should not try to take the space. They should respect us and honor us. And when they come, they say, I'm coming for the prayer. Please, I will not address the Christians. That's the right thing for politicians to yeah. do. Bishop yeah. Anthony Mugheria, please doing what, keep doing what you do. Huh? Thank keep you very much. Keep doing what you do and um, we need to keep talking. Thank you very much. Yeah. And we pray for our country, but above all, let's pray that this trip of Pope Francis in Africa will have the ripples and the actual transformation in hearts, not only of leaders, but of us, uh, the citizens who are too easily manipulated. Absolutely. That is the hope. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, indeed. Bishop Anthony Moharia there, um, Archbishop of Nyeri Diocese, speaking to us live here on the state of the nation. We're going to have uh, sports news up next. Uh, keep tweeting at Queen Angaja. At Vicky Rupadiri. At Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag.